On this very special episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, I am guest host Jason Noakes from Promo Pulse, and we're going to turn the tables and talk with Kirby Hossman on how he delivers marketing joy to us each and every week. What's up? Hey there, and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I'm your special guest host, Jason Noakes from Promo Pulse, and we're going to talk to Kirby Hossman on how he delivers marketing joy each week. So, Kirby, welcome to your show. <laughs> welcome to my show. Dude, thank you so much. This is going to be fun today. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, and so um, a little backstory. So, Kirby and I met at the PPAI Expo, and just to catch up, to have a beer at Rera, and... Um, I just had all these questions for him, uh, just how he pushes out so much content. He's everywhere, you know, there's videos and books and, and podcasts. And so, uh, so I realized that I just couldn't get by on one question. So I asked, so I asked to turn the tables. I, I need at least three questions for, for Kirby on this. So are you ready? I am ready to rock and roll, my friend. Awesome. Okay. So first question, um, I, you know, I obviously am into technology and mm-hmm. so, um, I was curious to what, technology you use to uh, record and edit your audio and video, what you um, use to schedule content, and then if you use a piece of software to actually push out to different channels. Mm. Okay. Great question. So to record, um, Skype is still what I use. I, I think Skype is a pretty fickle piece of software often, but it works well for this. And then we've got a, a, a thing called Call Recorder that allows me to record in split screen so that I don't have to actually set that up every time. It actually comes in as a file side by side, which is oh, nice. hugely helpful. Uh, I edit it in Final Cut. Uh, Final Cut 10 now. Um, it, it, to be honest with you, this particular piece of content actually doesn't have that many edits to it, which is very much by design. Because I right. always say that when it comes to content, it's not what you can co- what you can create; it's what you can recreate. Like if you do something awesome but can never do it again, right. then it's going to be hard to be consistent. So, uh, but Final Cut is that uh, scheduling uh, just Outlook for the most part. Um, you probably generally have done this before. So we'll, what I do is I, once I get somebody hammered down on a time, I send them an invite with the questions embedded. So it's all in one place. Um, that's evolved. Like it used to be, I'd send the email and it would be a bunch of different things. And I find that that's the most efficient way. Uh, let's see. I use Trello to try to keep track of some of that stuff, like my to do's. And then the final one is uh, software. I either post organically to each platform or I've, I've used Buffer as well. Buffer is a platform that allows you to schedule um, two different platforms in different ways. So Buffer is, I think that answers all the questions. So Buffer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> cool. Well, so um, how far in advance do you plan this content? I mean, I, I assume you have a plan. Maybe not. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you, you come up with ideas and, you know, to, to what you're going to talk about, um, because you do, you, you, you have things like almost every day mm-hmm. in addition to delivering marketing joy. So how do you, um, you know, what's the vision on that? And then also do you tailor the message to, to different channels? And do you also, you know, do you repost things and how often or do mm, you repost? Great, great question. So, yeah, no, it's it's fine. And, and and don't if I don't answer one, follow up. So uh, let's see, for the plan, I would say the most organized I am is through delivering marketing joy. I try to get ahead, and you know I'll get ahead on this one. Um, I try to have one or two sort of in the can so that I can move forward. If I get to, to Friday or Monday and I don't have one for Wednesday, I get I start to get really stressed out. Um, so my goal is to have three or four in advance, and that's that's the ideal. But there are times where it gets behind. But that's the most uh, unscripted. Um, uh, Bill is Bill Petrie, and I do unscripted. For those who don't know, it's a podcast and a video podcast. And to be honest, Bill is really the taskmaster on that. He helps keep me in line, um, sort of from a scheduling perspective on that piece. The rest of them, because I'm really organized with those. I think it allows me flexibility with the blog. Like what I'll do is if I have an idea for a blog post, but I don't have time to write it, I I log it in Trello just to, hey, this is an idea for later. Um, And I do that and I do that with video, like my vlog series as well. But I find, to be honest with you, the ones that tend to resonate the most are the ones where I get an idea and I can execute on it really, really quickly. 
um, because it's super fresh in my mind. I almost immediately have an idea of what I want to say or what I want to, how I want to shoot it. And so though I have sort of a way to, to store those, I don't find that they ever resonate quite as well if I come back to them in a month and try and write the same post. And so it isn't always feasible, but when I can just, you know what, I'm going to take 15 minutes and write that blog post right now, even if it's imperfect, it tends to to resonate as well. So it's like I schedule uh, like DMJ and the unscripted piece, and then I'm a little bit more flexible with the others. So do you, uh, just as a question, you know, when I post things, I always have to write it somewhere else before I post them. Do you post, do you just write it and just post it right there or do you actually put it somewhere else to massage it and then? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I think one of the secrets of me getting as much done and getting as much posted as I, as I do is the idea that I am not married to perfection. I, I write it and it is very rare (laughs) that like, obviously I try to reread it one time to make sure it doesn't have a major misspelling. But you'll find misspellings in my stuff. You'll find misspeaks sometimes because I'm like, I I think that so many times we're trying to chase perfect and perfect doesn't exist. And so I'll put it out in the world and fix it on the back end. And so I think that's one of the reasons I get a lot out is because I'm not so hung up on there being something wrong with it. Sometimes that wrong note is the the hook. Yeah, sometimes sometimes people are like, hey, did you know? And all of a sudden that that creates some some, uh, attention around the post. Yeah, cool. And I, by the way, too, I it, my whole life is in Trello, so I live and die by Trello yeah. for sure. Yeah, love it. All right, third question. So, um, so how has producing all this content mm-hmm. and speaking at conferences and writing your books, you know, how has that helped both your business, Hassam and marketing, and then uh, you personally? No, that's, I love this question. So, no, I think the big thing from a business perspective, I'll start there is when I started creating content at a a higher clip, I think for the most part, not only was I viewed as a salesperson by my my, uh, clients, I believe I was one, right? Like, yeah. and but by doing this and putting myself in a position, I think the reality of it is a lot of my clients and prospects see me more as a marketing company, a true marketing company, not necessarily a salesperson who sells marketing materials. Yeah. And that's been the biggest shift in my business is that we go from in the promotional world, sometimes we get brought in at the last minute. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. we, the whole thing is planned. And in two weeks, we got an event and we need some shirts and we need this. And so I, I'm happy to take those orders, but I can't have an impact on their business that way. Right. right. And right. so what has happened really is I get brought in on the front end of the conversation. That's the biggest real shift is that they call me and say, six months from now, we have an event. We need your help. And that's a totally different conversation. And sometimes I don't sell them any more than I would have before. But they view me differently. And I think, I hope, hopefully think rightfully so. And then from a personal perspective, I think in particular, the blog is, you know, when I'm writing, that's super cathartic for me. I think that's a place where Bill Petrie and I are similar. It's therapeutic for me to put these thoughts out. And so I tend to write a lot about personal development because I think you'll find that so much of what I write about is something I needed to hear that day. Right. Uh, and so I think from a personal perspective, it's helped me grow. And um, I think that's what's led me to read so much because I want to continue to grow and it's hopefully have some perspectives of, you know, beyond what I've had 10 years ago. So yeah, that makes Good. sense. I, and I appreciate in your books when you refer to other books, because then yeah. you know, I add that to my ever growing Wish list. Totally. Totally. (laughs) Things I need to get to. Yeah. Well, again, I think that uh, Dave Ramsey said it. I don't think he was the first person who said it, but I heard him say that uh, five years from now, you'll be the same person that you are today, except for the people that you meet in the books that you read. Yeah. And I think that there's a ton of truth to that. Yeah. No, I definitely think that uh, I can outread my competition. So (laughs) I love it. I love it. So, okay. So that's uh, my three questions. Do you have a question? For me? I do. I do. I'm super excited about it. So we talked really when you were just getting ready to launch Promo Pulse. And so I'm excited about that. And you know I'm fascinated by about entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurial journey. So now that it's launched and you're sort of in what Seth Godin would call like the dip, right? It's you've yeah, launched the messy here. middle. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what how has it changed? What are some things that went exactly like you thought? And what are some things that have surprised you so far? Well, um, yeah, I think it has, it's been, it was seven months on Sunday. So yeah, we're very fresh and new. Um, 
you know, everything with, with this endeavors like this is never a straight line. And, and <laughs> I'm very much in the, the, the dip and the messy middle. And, you know, uh, there was all the excitement right when we launched. And then, and then, you know, especially during the holidays, it's like nobody pays attention. So, <laughs> sure. so no, but uh, we're getting great traction. So, uh, you know, the, the biggest and the number one plan, it was to get the message out there and get people using the service. And so in that regard, the plan is it's going to according to plan because uh, we're, we're seeing steady growth in our user base. Um, the more, you know, as I talk here, do webinars or trade shows or marketing or whatnot, you know, it's just, it's almost like a ground battle, you know, one by one, getting people to understand and, you know, uh, let them know that I'm out there. And so, so in that case, it's, that was pretty expected. Um, most of the surprises have been good surprises. Um, uh, the biggest one, I, I probably mentioned this right the last time we spoke in August, um, just the amount of support that this industry gives. Um, you know, even now, I still get people asking, you know, if you need help, let me know. Um, it's like, a, it really makes you feel like you're a part of a family, and it's the reason that I've stayed in this industry my whole career. And so, and then, I, you know, the it's nice surprises like getting, um, you know, people emailing and testimonials that, you know, you don't ask for that just uh, they love this or they use it in this way. And then there's surprises on how people use your system that yeah. you don't expect. It's it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess that is handy for that. And so, <laughs> so it, you know, it's just not things you just kind of put stuff out there and you let it you kind of see what happens. And so, um, so that's been good. You know, it, there's been surprises. Uh, I've never had a um, been in a formal sales position so that you know this is all new and like i yeah. said the dips and, you know the week before christmas and you know there's nobody yeah. nobody cares <laughs> so yeah. uh so there's things like that and and you know the surprises when people just you know the, your your message isn't just uh, totally understood by everybody the first time out. <laughs> and so yeah. you know it's, it's just constant iteration um it's definitely uh, as Petrie put it, you know, the grind and, yeah. you know, it's just, uh, you're some days, you're, it's 12 hour days and, but it's, it's fun and it's very enjoyable and mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. You really have to, uh, it's similar, um, when you read about, uh, prof major league baseball players, they talk mm -hmm. about these, uh, whatever happened the day before they forgot it's a brand new day. And so you, you really have to wake up every day just ready to get at it mm -hmm. and no matter how what the day was like yesterday you just uh, focus on you know what you need to get done that day so so i think uh, overall it's been uh, good surprises and it's it's going well so i'm excited asking yeah no I, I i'm excited about it and uh you know i think you are living through that place where it's like you do a lot of work and it can't feel any way and then you're going to look up in six months and go oh man i've come a long way it yeah. just didn't feel that way in the middle yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's a, if that's a good book. If you haven't read that one, Messy Metal, okay. uh, it's a fantastic book. And it's, I always believe that you find these, you know, just at the right time sometime. And yes. so I just happened to open that one up. It was in on my Kindle. It's like, oh my gosh, I needed this right now. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> so anyway, so I, that's my answer. You, this is your show, so I'll let you uh, wrap up. Wrap it up. Well, cool. Just, just, just this last closing. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's totally fine. And, and Jason, I let me just start by saying I really appreciate you doing this. I'm excited about what you're doing, and we'll do this again sometime, okay? All right. Thank All you. Right. That's going to wrap Kirk. up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. Special thank, thanks to Jason, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.